I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. All right, Ty is back and it's a big day. <laughs> Tell me what you're doing. I was like, I want refrigeration. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I want outlet. She wants outlet. Right, this is an outlet. So obviously the refrigerator uh, plugs in. Well, not obviously. We have chosen to do AC um, refrigeration because I really loathe DC refrigeration because it always ices up. And any of you that have had an RV or sale, leave me a comment affirming, preach. It's a pain in the ass. The only DC refrigeration we're going to have is that cockpit fridge that's right there. Other than that, I am going to make everything or have made everything in the boat AC. This is a sub-zero under counter five cubic foot refrigerator, which is about for reference, the same size as like a double drawer isotherm or vitro frigo. Um, but it's half the price of the DC stuff and it doesn't freeze up. I think it's a win-win. Um, but this had DC power run to it, which of course we pulled out and I need to get it leveled in the space and put an outlet in so that when we have our going away dinner for Maddie tonight, well, there's actually a refrigeration space for us to put stuff in. That's what I'm doing. I'm measuring to adjust the, the, the foot levelers so that we can uh, get it squared up and then I'll put an outlet in and then Kim will smile really big. All right, we need to right. see the hole that it goes in. Oh. I can't get the camera in there. Hold on. Maybe. <laughs> that drain in the back is because DC refrigeration leaks and it drips as it melts. Also, this tray, which I'm removing, um, catches all the drips when you uh, defrost a, a freezer or refrigerator on uh, a traditional DC kind of setup. So this is actually going away because we don't need it anymore. Yay, more stuff off the boat. Right. The space that's inside of here for DC refrigeration and the drainage thereof um, has this funky multi-layered slope so it can capture all of that condensate and run it down. It's kind of a pain in the rear end, but the all of the legs need to be adjusted at a different height so that they kind of sit level in that sloping space. So that's what I'm doing is I'm measuring and unscrewing the feet so that they hit the right height so that this goes right up underneath it here on this counter and I can screw this to here so it doesn't fall out. We like that. Yeah, don't we? All right, I'm gonna hold this. I got you. You got me? Yeah. Thanks. Ooh, you let go, I wasn't expecting that. It's crazy, the left side's like 7 16ths, like just under a half an inch, I got it. And the right side is over an inch. That's it's crazy. that much out of, out of slope, so. All right. right, I need to get in there and clean really quick before you shove that thing back in the hole. So. I love when she says stuff like that. Like, can I get in there and clean before you work? <laughs> You're a good woman. All right. Clearing out some gear? Yeah, I don't think that we need these zip tie holders in here, so I'm going to remove them. That way they don't impede the leveling of the refrigerator. And of course, clean out this space because it's gross. <laughs> Did you find any sand? Um, I'm sure there is sand in here, but at this point, I'm just happy to report that it's dog hair, thanks Stella, and uh, just dirt, just Dust. dusty from being in and out of the boatyards and stuff like that. So just typical, haven't been, refrigerator hasn't been moved in a year, so it's just dirty. And these guys should just peel right up. Done. There we go. An ancillary benefit of wiring up this refrigerator is the fact that it's going to be easier to run the electrical for these outlets and switches that are on the counter above the refrigerator. Just outlets. <laughs> oh, that's okay. We don't have anything to switch on anyway. So outlets, <laughs> which means I get to plug more stuff in. It's a happy day aboard Dauntless. Sure is. <laughs> I know that you are crimping connections, however, I need you to tell me, we had to go through a whole thing about the 
layout of the 110 Oh yeah, so you missed, panel. you guys missed this conversation. Um, the power is dead right now, so I can touch all of this fun stuff, but the top half of this is going to be AC, alternating current. And we have three vertical columns, and these things right here are bus bars. So you typically would just put power to this bus bar here, that power feeds wire or feeds electricity down the bar, and then each of these tabs here will pick up the power for each breaker. On the other side of this breaker, this is where you hook the load side or whatever appliance outlet, whatever thing that you're trying to run, goes onto the other side. And then obviously when you turn the breaker, it's the switch, it just allows energy to run through. We thought, oh, because I'm not fully back in electrical brain today, apparently. Like, oh, I'll just put all the galley here and I'll put all this there and what have you. The problem is, is that we've got a bunch of heavy loads in the galley. And if I run everything off of this bar, yes, I can produce enough power. And yes, I can put enough, the large, large enough wire to run it. The problem is, is we want to, we want to balance the loads. And because we're good old American power here, we take our 220 loads and we split them in half. I guess that's a short way to describe this is that as the 220 comes in, there's two legs of power. If we put all the, lo the load on one horse, then you're just gonna go in circles, right? Or it'll overload that one side. And this is called a phase. So what we're gonna do is, is that we're gonna alternate the heavy loads between phase one and phase two, and then the minor loads will be over here so that we get an even distribution of power on each of the legs. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's exactly okay. what I wanted. All right, does that make sense? So the panel will be laid out not exactly what we feel is the most convenient look, but Correct. it will be the most effective distribution of load. Well, and that's, it's not really fair. We just wanted everything to be in one column. It will be, it'll be in a row instead of a column, right? Because we'll do rows across versus column up and down. I think it'll still look nice. It's just not going to be what we were kind of envisioning when we were laying out the prettiness of the panel. But function comes before form, right, Kim? In this case, absolutely. Yes, that's what I'm doing. So if you wanna come over here around the corner, this is, we'll have obviously a protective cover over it and separate out all the AC and DC loads in the future. But for right now, this is our ground and neutral, and this is phase one and phase two. These two big four gauge cables are coming in. So this is phase one, this is gonna come across and hit one bus bar. Phase two will feed the second bus bar, and then I'll likely split the third bus bar in half and run a wire to each side so that each of these legs is doing equal load in the boat, and that way the generator's balanced, the, in the inverters are balanced, and the shore power is an all balanced, um, even load sharing, essentially. That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna wire these guys up. We have a party to cook for here in like 30 minutes. So I'm gonna get the rest of this wired up so I can actually plug a cooktop and a little oven in and turn on the refrigerator. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll see you guys when it's all done. Well, boat yoga never ends, but at least you have a slightly bigger place to be. <laughs> right? <laughs> Ties in a hole again. <laughs> Maddie leaving. I get stuck with all the hole work. Oh. That's I get the feeling you'd be in this hole anyway, doing the electrical, but it's Probably. Fine. I don't know. She got pretty good at doing electrical. She follows instructions well. All right. So you are wiring up the outlet for the refrigerator, which means I'm going to have a refrigerator soon. I, I think in just a couple of minutes. Yeehaw. God, I'm so excited. All right. Don't electrocute yourself. Oh, All the right. power's off. You're good. Yeah, power's off. Okay. All right. Continue mission. Do you have any do you have any pro tips for wiring an outlet? Any pro tips for wiring an outlet? Um, in a boat specifically? Um, yeah, I do actually. Stand by for a second. Right. If you're gonna use a residential outlet, which a lot of these boat companies do, I think that's the only option, isn't it? Um, there's European outlets in this boat, but they also use kind of standard American outlets for the non visible stuff, um, you know, back where outlets behind appliances and what have you, and GFIs like this. Anyway, in a house, they use solid wire. So you actually bend a loop and the loop goes around the post clockwise. And then as you screw it down, it tightens it. But this is stranded wire, so you can't do that. So Ty's pro tip is you want to use 
a forked uh, type of a spade connector so that when this goes in, it tucks just nicely underneath the screw and then you're screwing down the, t the terminal and you're not trying to screw down a bunch of wires that are just gonna squish out everywhere because you can't do straighted wire on this. That is a no, no. Oh, that's my tip. Good pro tip. Good pro tip. Love it. <laughs> I'm just handing my tools back Yay. to Kim blindly. There we go. Uh, I'll get a um, strain relief just to zip tie this guy down, but then it goes into the panel on the other side. And then I've got another outlet right above here for the countertop. And that's going to be it. I'm going to slide this guy in and get it out of the way, plug it in, and Kim is going to have, Kim, we are going to have a refrigerator. Yeehaw! When you were installing the drawer slides. Yeah, I was installing the drawer slides a couple weeks ago. I was kind of throwing a little bit of shade at the at the cabinetry crew and I retract my statement. Um, I think that they did a fine job. After seeing how this guy goes in here, what I think happened is, is that when the bottom got torn out of the boat, we knew that that ceiling kind of shifted and we re kind of set everything down there, but I didn't pay attention up here because I thought everything was fine. But in fact, some of this cabinetry has shifted a little bit. So I am gonna have to, it's rock solid now, like it's not going anywhere. So I think I'm gonna have to make some optical illusion uh, cabinetry adjustments that are just slightly out of plumb um, visually so that it everything lines up nice. But yeah, I think it's all just a little, it's just a bit outside um, and you know, over three feet, it's off like three eighths of an inch. So, but I'll get it. And I think the, you can see the Let side here. I can come over. Can you see how this is kind oh, of kicked yeah. out? So I think what happened is this whole thing kind of went just like got this. And that's why that we have a little bit of separation here, here, and the whole thing kind of went yeah. So when we tear this off and redo this entire structure, I'll square everything up, put the new vertical supports in and then yeah, we'll square it all up, but um, yeah, it's kind of, to get this pretty tight, it's it's crooked. Well. No worries. It will, will it, resolve, will work, it will work at four degrees offset, so. That will resolve very, very shortly. Yes. But for now. For now, you're going to have, look okay, you have a place to put a cutting board. <laughs> I don't need a cutting board right there. And, you, and you've got a refrigerator. Well, you're going to get one, so. Oh, okay. All right. Can you, I have the, the grill so I can put it down here? Yeah. Okay, moment of truth. All right, so I've tempted in the art head outlet and then a galley outlet and the fridge. This is not the final location, but they're all close together and it'll allow me to identify. And then I will be zip tying all this together later, but this is my phase one supply. Goes from here down here, a big six gauge wire to feed that phase, which should have less than 50 amps worth of service on it. Now I am going to um, go in menu quattro and we are going to go to the switch and we're going to turn this on check. Wait for the click pages. TikTok Click. baby. I heard it. It is now we're bringing in Oh, it's funny. We have dropped a couple volts and it's going to go charge. So what it's doing is it's bringing in 11 kilowatt off the shore. We're currently not inverting anything, but if you watch this That is the refrigerator, that is the galley outlet, and that is our head outlet. So now Kim, look at that. See? Look how fast it topped off. Wow, that's 10, so watts, quick. 10,000 watts, and then it just had to top off a couple couple amps. Done. AC loads. If you right. open that fridge, we should be able to have some. Can you take Yes. I am going to open this, and I am going to turn. Yep, turn it on. Okay. 
should be a power button. There's a power button here. Okay. <gasps> I have power. Set at 37. Set at 37. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and what do we got here? So it looks like we had about 94 watts to run that guy, 100 watts to cool it down. Excited? <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh my god. So the secret to keep your wives happy is you just deprive them from basic household and life conveniences for long enough, and then all you have to do is put an outlet or two in, and you're a hero. Hero. <laughs> all right, let's get ready for this party. All right, I hope this comes out. Um, we got on a refrigeration kick, and... Ty's doing the cockpit fridge now, and you'll never guess what we found. More sand. <laughs> How's your treasure hunting going? Guess what I found. Yeah, more sand. More sand. Yeah. Let's see. We should add it to the total. 10 pounds, maybe? <laughs> maybe 15? God. It's a lot. But this spot and the spot right below you is I think the last two bastions of potential sand hiding. And when I cut this floor to make an access hatch. Larger volumes of sand. Yeah, there's gonna be some there's gonna be some little stuff shaking out of the cracks for a while, I think, but that's okay. Cause I love my boat. Is that it? That's all I have to say about that. Okay. So Kim, how's the cleanup of the uh, eBay <laughs> two generations ago special on our cockpit fridge? Here's my, <laughs> here's my challenge. Ty is cleaning up the remnants of sand and the grossness in the hole. And I get the tedious task of, okay, this is what happened. So we were trying to protect the refrigerator by leaving the film on it but it's been almost two years and I think in the process we actually did more harm to ourselves than good because now I have to literally scrape this off with a plastic go. Go. with a plastic scraper to try and get this off because it literally is crumbling a little bit of goo gone on my paper towel to kind of soften it up a little bit and then my plastic scraper. It's gonna take me forever. So what happened was we, uh, I thought I was being real clever and I got close to the same model number, but it was like two years old and it was on sale on eBay. And I didn't notice there was a scratch and dent. It came in the box and we left it for like six months before we opened it. Yeah, it's not the right one. It does fit, but it's not the right one and it's, um, well, the good news is, is that it's slightly smaller, so it's not like it. we have to cut parts out. Yeah, the, the screw pattern will be smaller, but um, yeah, we're on a budget, <laughs> so we're just going to deal with what we have right now, and we'll see how it works. I hope it actually works, because we've never turned it on. We're maybe go through this entire effort to make it all pretty, and clean it up, and wire it up, and we flip the switch, and it goes wah, wah, wah. I, I have faith and confidence because the Sub-Zero worked just perfectly. So I think this one's gonna work. And we know how to fix it if we need to. So we'll just put a new compressor in it or whatever. All right, Kim, get to it. I don't have all day. Is my, that blood? Yeah, I cut my finger. <laughs> <laughs> this edge is very sharp and I cut my finger, but I have to finish. All right, I've got it screwed in and installed and wired in. Let's turn on the breaker and push the power button, see if it works. Okay, and ready? <laughs> A blue light. <laughs> and there you go. So we know it turns on. Now the question is, does it get cold? Well, we're gonna figure that out here in about an hour, I'd imagine. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, let's fill it up full of beer. <laughs> Give it a job, load it up, wire it up, and turn it on, and lo and behold, it does not get cold. And I think it's because there, it's got low refrigerant in it. So I added some more refrigerant. This takes R134A, and um, 
added just a little bit and it really didn't make a difference. So I think just to be safe, I'm gonna pull a vacuum on the system. So I'll discharge it, pull a vacuum on it and see if there's any leaks in the system. And if there's no leaks in the system, then I'm just gonna recharge it again. <laughs> I need to figure out how much it's actually supposed to go in there. Um, so I'm working on it, but little by little, but thank goodness I have all this equipment that I bought for the air conditioners and it all translates over to um, refrigeration. I'm kind of poking around and learning as I go. But so far, I think this is going to be a success. All right, see what happens. Will you turn the breaker off, babe? Turn the power off to this unit? Yep. Off. Okay. All right. What is it that you're gonna do? I am going to turn on this vacuum pump and I'm gonna pull a vacuum and pull everything out of the compressor and make sure that there's no air or nitrogen or anything else in there. If this number changes, it'll tell me that it's not uh, that it's not holding a vacuum or not holding air or refrigerant or whatever. But it takes a few minutes of it running to be able to pull the, the pressure all the way down. So. We're gonna sit here and watch paint dry for a minute. And I also cut the tip of my finger off last night. I'm a hot mess. I was cutting chicken after I cooked it and I had turned away to say something and my finger slipped in and right through, cut the edge of my finger off and cut about 25% of the nail, 30% of the nail, whoosh, just not nice. Nice, smooth cut. Ouch. <laughs> okay, what's a happening? <laughs> all right, I pulled the vacuum down, let it sit for a few minutes, and now I'm slowly introducing more refrigerant in and uh, trying to recharge the system. I think I might've had too much gas in it before. So hopefully. So you've got your bottle hooked up. The bottle hooked up is pushing gas through here and I can open and close this valve to let the refrigerant flow into the system. And you have to do it while the compressor is running. And just, just slow but sure, a little bit at a time. So I add a little bit, pressure comes up and it slowly settles down as everything, you know, kind of reaches a homeostasis and just takes patience. Wish me luck. We want cold beer. <laughs> yeah, this is the drink fridge. That's right. And it is blustery today. I don't know. Tell me in the comments. Is the beer fridge the most important fridge on the boat? Maybe. Maybe not. Oh my gosh. Depends on the day, I think. <laughs> like if you got your finger. <laughs> today it's important. Today it's important. Oh. I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. So. I think if I just be nice to it and slowly pull the temp up or put the refrigerant in, I'll hit the exact right amount. All right. I'll be back in a few and let you know how it goes. Good luck. Thanks. All right. Our lighting is really rough because, well, we're dealing with <laughs> table lamps and Milwaukee flashlights, but this is the down and dirty. <laughs> so Ty wasn't paying attention last night. That light is really harsh. And, uh, I don't know if you can really have to get close, like all the way on top of it. But Ty cut off his fingertip. Well, kind of the side of it, really. You want some soap to wash that out? <laughs> Uh, I am all over the place with this. I apologize. So you are cleaning and redressing your wound and taking care of it, but he really did hurt his finger. So things might be a little slower around. Yeah. Yeah. That, that hurt really bad to be able to take that. We need some better lighting in here. <laughs> it was guy. So. I think it's just skin in the nail bed. I don't know if I got, I don't think I got any muscle or anything in there, but I think that might take a minute to heal and grow back. <laughs> yeah. Right now we just uh, want to keep it clean. 
Yes. Protected. So I'm putting my triple antibiotic on it and I am wrapping it and trying to be a good patient. Yeah. Knife. This does mean I get out of dish duty for a little while. You got like out you of did cooking. dishes before. Right? He, <laughs> hey, he got out of cooking and dishes. Uh, this is true. I, I did get out of cooking, so. But, which is kind of a bummer because I like to cook, but it is what it is. I'll get wrapped up and I'll be on the mend. I'm sorry, did you use your spaghetti napkin to wipe your finger? Yeah, but I got it all folded. I got it all. I folded oh over to the. God. I used the clean side. Okay, I'm going to get you some clean. Somebody's going to have an aneurysm over that one. No, no. The spaghetti was on the inside. All of the stuff you see out there, that is um, blood? That's blood. It's dried uh, blood that I wiped. Okay. The spaghetti is on the other side. Oh, my God. Still, you need a clean. You asked for a clean paper <laughs> towel, too. Oh, so I didn't make a mess on the, on the table. Oh on the God. placemat? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Time for some wound clean and all of that. I'll be right back. Uh, Thanks, babe.